December the 10th, 2011. The biggest protests in Russia since the 90s, beginning at least from Putin's first presidential term. The confirmed number of protesters allowed by the police to take part is 30,000, while the expected number of participants has exceeded 100,000. People from different social backgrounds, ages, political views and beliefs are gathering at Balotnaya Square on an island in the Moskva River, in the center of Moscow, to protest against electoral fraud. They want their voices back. Before the day of the big meeting, the Internet, the means by which this outstanding gathering had been organized, was full of warnings about provocations that are supposedly being prepared by Yedina Rossiya, the ruling party, which has largely distorted the results of the latest Russian elections in most regions of the country. As soon as I realized that those rumors about bloodshed in store for protesters were our government's attempt to scare me off this meeting, I could no longer stay at home. And I wouldn't go there just to be a part of big crowd and chant with others. But this meeting is also a brilliant chance to film my compatriots and to present Russian and Moscow people to my friends living in different countries throughout the world. The protest against stealing votes seems to have united Russian society like it has never happened since 1991, when everybody was against GKCP. By the way, these padlocks are hung on metal trees by newly married couples, signifying that their fates are interlocked together forever. The key is traditionally thrown into waters of the Moskva River. The place where this meeting is gathered is a popular site for wedding walks. Here are the flags of different colors. They mean that groups which are regular opponents to one another are this time united. Red-black flags belong to the anarchists. And these black, yellow, white are of the pro-monarchist movement, soft-core Russian nationalists. Churova Nanari means sent Churov to prison. Churov is a head of electoral committee, the organization responsible for the vote count and therefore for the electoral result hawks. Now watch it carefully. Count the smiles. Many people are smiling. That is rather unusual for Moscovites, who usually look sad or tired or somewhat angry. Even the famous and feared of Russian Amon officers seem to be in a good mood now. Here is even more unbelievable case, friendly among officers talking to civilian women. 
This man is not smiling. His slogan is an outcry to free political prisoners in Belarus. And that one is the only totalitarian country in contemporary Europe and the only European country where the death penalty still exists. This satirical picture reminds people about the destructive properties of Russia's recent educational reforms, once initiated by the same party, Yedina Rossiya. This slogan states, a state without justice is like a gang of mobsters. And this one is my favorite. It says, I didn't vote for these jerks. I voted for other jerks. I demand recounting votes. By the way, the Kremlin towers in the background are an example of medieval Italian architecture, erected by Italians once invited by Russian Tsars in their time. People do not protest against me filming them, like they would usually do. They probably are ashamed to show any fear of being filmed in this place. Maybe through this openness they are defeating the old fear that has been living in Russian souls since Stalin era. The fear of punishment for expressing one's views different from what is allowed by the ruler. By not hiding their faces from cameras, Moscovites present here try to prove themselves that something has changed and they are not afraid anymore. And this, again, about the expectation of provocations. A couple of chaps light fires. The crowd is chanting, put the fires out. After a few minutes, they try it again, and the reaction is the same until the fires go out. A gentleman in yellow suddenly recognizes a lady photographer standing beside me. He introduces them with his wife to one another very warmly. And he is not afraid to do so, which was impossible to imagine in Russian past eras. I saw this policeman and thought he would rather smoke a cigarette. I gave him one. Never felt how nice it is a friendliness between a citizen and a policeman. The latter is hard to explain to any normal Westerner what's so special about it. All the fears turned out to not be true. This meeting was both the biggest in numbers of participants for years and together with that the most peaceful.
After it was all over, people went to restaurants and cafes located around the place. Putin and Medvedev are not at all afraid or have any respect for these people. But they understand that a forceful crackdown of this meeting would harm them. And now everybody feels good. The next day hundreds of people will write that they'd never seen such friendly police officers in Moscow. We all feel that we have done our civic duty. And of course the votes will not be recounted. Everybody is satisfied, but who knows for how long. Oh, and one more point. Here's what they have created out those pictures photographed using that fantastic remote-controlled hexacopter. They've called it a meeting planet.